What's up, Gear Mortals? Trey Xavier here. On today's edition of Gear God's Quality Control, we're going to be taking a look at this Halo Guitars Salvis Baritone production model. Halo Guitars is primarily known as a custom guitar manufacturer out of China, and you may have seen some ridiculous, ludicrous creations of theirs uh, that probably never actually made it into the real world because they have a custom online builder that allows you to upload any image that you want to be printed basically onto the guitar. I honestly don't know if any of those ever got actually built, but for a while, people were just going absolutely ham building these like 10 string monstrosities with like memes on them and shit. And of course, as hilarious as that is, it probably was a total nightmare to get an order like that actually to come in and then to build it, especially considering that the customer is gonna be a lot more picky about what actually arrives at the price that they would have to pay for a, a crazy 10 string monstrosity with, you know, multi-scale and a picture of Pepe the Frog. Halo Guitars is still a custom shop, but they're also focusing now on making production models, such as this particular one, the Salvus Baritone. They have a couple other ones in the works and ones that are already out. If you know me, then you probably think that this looks like a guitar that's right up my alley as a sort of telly shape. It's a baritone scale length, which initially I didn't get on with uh, back in the day when I first started playing longer scale guitars. I, I had a hard time getting into it, but now I'm very comfortable on a 27 inch scale, which this is. I had them set it up for D standard, which in hindsight, I probably should have gone a lot lower just to really test the lengths of, of what the scale length of 27 inches could do. If you watch this channel a lot, you'll know that I love telly shapes. This one is very true classic telly shape in the sense that it is a slab body. It's a squared off, you know, no contours, simple machine with this kind of classy triple pinstripe binding going on. It is not an ergonomic guitar in any way. Um, the slab style telly body, uh, I don't really get on with personally. Some people don't care at all, so you might not uh, give a shit. It chugs real good. It chugs so good. <laughs> It's mean. Today we're going through the Engel Savage 120 Mark II, which is uh, very new. And actually today's the, the first day that I've plugged it in. And, oh baby, oh, this amp fucks. Speaking of chugging, um, we've got this Evertune bridge on here, as well as the 27 inch scale. So if you thought that anything that you played was gonna go sharp when you pick really hard, you were wrong. You're so dead wrong. Right now, I actually have it set to the zone where you can where you can bend notes. But even with it set to that, it's still pretty hard to bend, and that's a combination of long scale length, ever tune, and a pretty heavy string gauge on here. If what you're going for is really super in tune, good hard picking, uh, this guitar can handle it. Obviously you can set it up in whatever gauge and tuning you want and that'll affect it a bit. But having the Evertune system on here is, is really nice for what I like to do, which is to pick pretty hard for my rhythm guitar parts without it going out of tune because I think the tone sounds better if you hit the guitar good and hard, but the pitch sometimes suffers because it'll just go wild when you hit it that hard. That is just not a problem with this guitar at all. Here, I'll set it to um, the mode where it doesn't bend at all, and then I'm gonna pick super, super hard, and we'll see what happens. Check this out. Right there. I'm really trying to bend these strings and nothing's happening, so. That is nuts. That's as hard as I can pick. I'm no Misha Mansour, but I can pick pretty hard, and it's it's not going sharp at all. That's pretty bonkers. Um, I can see the, the waveform just going woo <laughs> when I hit it that hard. I think that makes the amp sound better. Um, it makes the amp work less hard to get some distortion because anytime you have to add a lot of gain on the amp, you're also adding noise. So if you have to crank up the gain to make up for your picking technique, 
it's not gonna sound as good because it will naturally sound noisier. If you can use less gain and hit harder, it's always gonna sound better. One thing that I actually didn't think about until I had the guitar in my hands is this. Usually a guitar with a longer scale length like this 27 inch baritone exists so that you can have better string tension at the pitch that you're going for. With a shorter scale length guitar, usually what you wind up doing is kicking up the, the string gauge quite a bit, and that usually makes it feel uh, not as good as you probably want to. So this guitar allows you to have a somewhat lighter string gauge at a lower tuning. So in that sense, having an ever-tuned bridge can actually improve your live guitar tone in that particular way. Of course, in order to have an ever-tune on here, you have to remove quite a bit of wood from your guitar. This is like a, a bigger cavity than a Floyd Rose, but I didn't notice any kind of like weird tonal things. It doesn't like sound like a hollow body guitar or anything like that. Maybe like a tad bit woodier than like a completely solid guitar, but a lot of people pay good money to have their guitars chambered. <laughs> Of course, if you play with a lot of expressive wiggles, even in your rhythm guitar playing, having it set to this mode isn't really gonna help you. In general, I find that the Evertune kind of inhibits your expressivity when you play. This guitar is obviously not really aimed at the ultra expressive, super vibrato-y kind of a player. I don't wanna say that it's entirely aimed at rhythm guitar players, but it's got one pickup, it's got the Evertune, it's a baritone scale length and it's six strings. It kind of seems like it's aimed at primarily rhythm guitar players in heavy music. This is definitely a great guitar for recording, especially because between the baritone scale length and the Evertune, you could really get some extremely clean, very in tune sounding rhythm guitar tracks. It's kind of a crazy miracle. Like I got this guitar in the mail and I haven't had to tune it since. Um, the tuners on the headstock aren't actually for tuning the guitar. You tune everything at the bridge. It's kind of a labor intensive process that luckily I didn't have to do because they set it up for me. But these are only for replacing the strings and putting it in the different zones, the either the more expressive version um, where you can do vibrato or uh, the one where it, the strings literally don't bend at all. This guitar is definitely a pick up and go kind of a guitar. You'll never have to tune it unless you decide that you want to change tunings. It's got the kill switch, which is super fun to play with, a single knob just for volume. Honestly, this probably could have been just an on-off switch and it probably would have fit the guitar just fine because it's about as no nonsense as you could possibly get. You just pick it up and go and you don't worry about anything. It allows you to focus more on actually playing the thing and it's super utilitarian. It looks awesome and it feels really, really good. We've got a combination of finishes on this guitar that I like. We've got the gloss finish on the body and then the matte finish on the neck, which I think is clutch because I don't wanna feel the sticky, glossy finish on the part where I'm playing, but I like a nice gloss finish for how it looks. Even though you get fingerprints on it and stuff, um, I still think that it looks pretty cool on stage. I really like this kind of trans black burst on this guitar. It's metal, but it's not so metal that it's completely flat black. It's, it's classy, you know? It's got this dark, swampy kind of a look. <laughs> Although this is obviously a much more modest design than some of the user-generated atrocities from the graphic online builder that they made, it's number one, a lot cheaper. Number two, it's available right now. You could just order one of these guitars and it'll get to you in however long it takes them to ship it, rather than waiting for them to build you a fully custom guitar and then you, you know, it arriving and 
it having Neil deGrasse Tyson's face on it and then you wonder why you would ever do such a thing. But if this guitar is a good example, they're definitely doing these production models justice and it's definitely worth the amount of money that you're gonna spend. For $1,300, this guitar comes with locking tuners, an Evertune bridge, a bare knuckle brute force pickup, and a kill switch. So I really don't think that you can beat those features at this price on a guitar that's going to be even remotely well made. So I don't think you're gonna be bummed if you get yourself one of these. It plays really well. Um, it's, it's really well put together, no finish flaws. I would have liked some front dots, but that's just me. Some people like the super clean look better. I was pretty much completely unable to find any fault in this guitar in terms of the build quality. The th problems that I had with it are mostly just preference things in terms of the design. Like I said, it is in no way ergonomic, but aside from that, it was really fun to play and I liked it a lot. So this one gets my seal of approval. So knowing Halo Guitars as a custom shop in the past, I've enjoyed this introduction to them as a production line as well. Um, this guitar is pretty sick, and you can learn more about them and their production line at haloguitars.com. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you haven't already, mash that subscribe button, smack the bell for notifications, and drop us a like for more reviews and original content. And I'll see you real soon.